Hi guys, my name is David and welcome back to my channel. Before I get the whole video rolling, I just want to say that today is the last day that I have off during October. And I was planning to go out to a cemetery for my last day off. Because it's the only times I can go and visit a cemetery and do these videos. But the weather today has been terrible. It's been raining pretty much all day. And yeah, it's not really appropriate for me to go out in, in a um, cemetery pouring pouring with, with um, rain. This isn't going to be the last video for October. I'm probably going to do maybe one, maybe two more videos. Ending it up with my October wrap up and what I'm planning to do for November. But in today's video, I am going to be reviewing Survivor Song by Paul Tremblay. I've had this book in my possession for a while now and I picked it up in the um, charity shop and I read the back of it and the reason why I haven't read it soon is because it's based on a pandemic and at the time COVID-19 was you know, having a party in the world and I didn't really, really want to read something about a virus where the virus was still going on and it's still going on around today I do know that but you know what I mean everyone was inside basically the world would, was put on pause but I wanted to pick this up to see what I thought about Paul Tremblay's work and to see what I thought and and to see what I thought about this book as a whole this does have sprayed AM, um, edges to it this is how it came and it also is a signs book plate and um, this is like a sticker in the book which is signs so this is going to be a spoiler free video and this is just going to be my own thoughts and opinions regarding Survivor Song and Paul Tremby as an author so far so Survivor Song is in a post-apocalyptic world as such there's a new virus going around which infects people with this rabies virus and this virus kind of encourages people to start biting each other and when they bite another person the virus gets transmitted through that way this does affect the human population as well as the animal population and as a result it leaves them in kind of a zombie-like state i'm pretty sure that the people infected with this form of rabies cannot talk or communicate so they are pretty much like zombies so we are introduced to our two main female characters in this book one that is called natalie who at the start of the book she is bitten by one of these rabies infected people this man that's infected with this virus bites natalie who at the time is heavily pregnant and she's about to give birth at any moment but she gets bitten on the arm and her medical friend called ramola comes into contact with her i'm not sure if they know each other or knew each other in a past life i think they did but they come into contact with each other and ramola knows that natalie has been bitten and it's just a race against the clock basically to save her and to save her unborn child so the way that this book is structured it's not broken up into several days it's basically re retelling what happens in a series of several hours so if you are looking to read a book in one sitting or do a 
24 hour readathon, then this is the perfect one to focus on in my personal opinion. The stuff that these two individuals come across is quite extraordinary. We Paul introduces elements in the book where he touches on how humanity and the world would react in this situation. If a zombie outbreak happened, how would people react? And some people will act in a good way, some people act in a bad way. They do come across some shady characters in this book, as well as a couple of kids on bikes and a group of zombie hunters. And this book is all about Ramola trying to save her friend, to try to rescue her and to deliver a, a unborn baby. They come across all these road, uh, these are uh, roadblocks that they uh, come across and it's just a race against time. And when you are reading this, I won't spoil what happens, but Natalie has been bitten and in this whole world, the further you are bitten on your body, away from your brain, is, for, for, is, um, is theoretically, it's going to give you more time until you change, basically, into this minus eating machine or you know, a zombie. So if you're bitten on the neck, it's going to take the virus um, a short distance from going to your neck to your brain, rather than if you've been bitten on your big toe, it's going to take it, um, a while before it goes up from your foot up to your um, yeah, head area. So when you're reading this book, you're thinking about, okay, Natalie has been bitten on the arm and she's going to eventually turn into one of these creatures. Whether she does or whether she doesn't, I'm not going to say. But there's that kind of thing at the back of your mind saying, well, what's the point? And to that, I say that friendship is the point. Ramola goes basically to hell and back for her friend. She is determined to not just save her friend, but save her friend's unborn baby. And there are points in this book where the book is kind of split up into perspective chapters, I would say. You know, we've got R Ramola's chapters, which are focused on, yeah, her journey and and um, Natalie's journey as well, and yeah, them going through the motions to try to save each other. But there's also shorter chapters which are focused on Natalie, where she is pretty much recording messages, I think on her phone to her unborn child. So she's kind of giving the child her backstory and the idea is if she doesn't make it the child can just like listen to these recordings and get to know their mother better so this was a really really good book i'm really impressed with paul his writing is very very easy to read it flows in a really good way i was engaged from start to finish yes there were a few scenes here and there that kind of slowed the story down, but I didn't mind it. This story isn't about the zombie um, outbreak. This is more about Nat Natalie and Ramola going on this journey in this environment where the zombies and this virus exist. And what happened at the end, as always, I won't spoil what happens at the, you know, at the end. I'm not one of them types of people. But the ending left me with a like OMG moments. Like, Paul, you couldn't leave this book at that time. You can't leave it. I need more. I need to know what happens to these characters. You cannot do this to me. But have no worries there, guys. There is a part in the book, which is the postlude, which this is essential to read. So when you finish the book and you're like, okay, that's the end of the story. I won't bother re re um, reading this bit. Read this bit, guys. This, uh, this bit is important. And reading that bit kind of answered a lot of questions that I didn't have resolved in this story. It didn't really like tie everything in a nice little bow, but it left me satisfied. We never really find out about 
well, I'm pretty sure we never find out about how this rabies virus came to be. But in all fairness, we don't have to know. So that has been my review of Survivor Song. Hopefully I've given you guys enough information to gauge whether this is going to be your, th um, your thing or not. I would highly recommend this to anyone that's interested in horror. If you are a little bit squeamish on gore and blood, this isn't really focused on that as much. But I am really pleased that I have read this. I've ordered a couple more of Paul's um, work. Um, a Head Full of Ghosts and Disappearance at Devil's Rock. I'm probably going to be reading A Head Full of Ghosts next. Oh, it's the next one of his books that I'll be reading. And I cannot wait to like slowly go through his catalogue of work. Because this book has left me intrigued to see what else Paul has written. So when it comes to what I'm going to rate this book, I'm going to rate it a 4 stars out of 5. Let me know, have you read Survivor Song? Well, what did um, you think of it? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Is there anything else by Paul Tremblay that you have read that you recommend that I read? Apart from Head Full of, Go um, a, um, Head Full of Ghosts. I think that everyone in the comments is probably going to be saying you have to read that book. But apart from that one, is there anything else that you recommend that I read by Paul? And if you haven't read this book, let me know if I've maybe encouraged you or inspired you to pick it up and give it a chance so guys that has been my video hopefully you enjoyed it thank you for watching we're in the um, end game now for october hopefully i can get you hopefully i can get a few more videos out before this month ends i'm planning to do as i said a october wrap up to actually tell you what i've read this month and also as i said what i'm planning to do for November because November I want to have a more like laid back and chilled month not not just with reading but with uploading videos but I'll go for that in that video I'm not sure if I'll be doing any other videos apart from that one um who actually knows but thank you for watching this one guys and I'll see you in my next video